One of the questions I've asked previously is the, about the efficacy of the vaccine, um, and that's not what this is about. It's about the quality assurance in regards to the way data has been collected. Uh, and the response from Professor Kelly at the time was, was that the vaccine reduces um, serious injury and death. Uh, and when I was given numbers to prove that, the numbers of people who caught unvaccinated people who caught COVID over 70, the death rate was 32.1%. Yet the, the number of uh, unvaccinated people who caught COVID and died under the Alpha variant uh, was around 23%. So somehow these numbers uh, given to me by the health department were saying that the number of unvaccinated people who died from Omicron were 40% higher than the number of unvaccinated people who died from Alpha. Uh, that doesn't accord with the prior medical advice that said Omicron wasn't as severe a virus. So why is it that the numbers provided by the health department don't correlate with what the statements made by the health department. Professor Kelly, are you able to address that question? Uh, yes, Brendan, sorry. Um, the, uh, Senator Rennick, with respect, we've answered these questions multiple times previously. You haven't explained it. You haven't explained it allow Professor Kelly to respond, particularly whilst he's on video conference and there is a slight delay. Professor Kelly. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, we, we, we have answered it, we have explained it. I'm not and, and on notice in writing as well as at various uh, times uh, in the room. Um, I, I'll refer again, as I did earlier, to the, to the recent uh, preprint publication by the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance categorically shows um, that within the Omicron wave, vaccines are entirely and incredibly effective. That's not my question. Sorry, Chair, that is not my question. I, I want to know why your numbers show that the death rate from Omicron is higher than the death rate from Alpha. That is what I want you to explain, please. Senator, Senator Rennick, oh, sorry, Professor Kelly. I, I will pass the call back to Professor Kelly. If you could please allow him to finish his answer, I will return to you for a supplementary question. If he doesn't question. deflect, Chair, he's if deflecting um, from Senator, my question. Senator Rennick, it is, I am not able to instruct Professor uh, Kelly on how to answer a question, um, just as I'm not able to instruct you as long as your question is within the standing orders of the scope of estimates. Um, I am asking that we allow Professor Kelly to respond. Um, and then I will return to you for a supplementary Thanks. question if you're seeking further clarification. Professor Kelly. Um, thank you, Chair. Senator, behind your question is a, is a premise that you have the vaccines are not effective. Uh, so I'm, I'm answering that with factual information. No, that's not the question. Study, Australian study of 3.8 million people over the age of 65, which clearly demonstrates the vaccines are effective uh, in, in decreasing death. Um, it's absolutely categorically correct. Uh, in terms of your, prem your, your second premise of the question, um, that Omicron is, is not less, it, it, that the rate of death is higher in Omicron compared with Alpha, that's not true. Uh, and They're your numbers. I'm quoting your numbers. Professor Rennick. We provide <laughs> that information. I might as well be <laughs> compared to this. Senator <laughs> <plan. laughs> I just got the coffee, so we should be back on track. Um, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> Professor Kelly, please continue. It's just I had no, no further answer, um, Senator. Um, okay, so, so I'll, I'll follow up now. So, so in, in response to your, your statements there, which I dispute, I'm not talking about the study of 3.8 million people. I'm talking about the actual figures that you provided. And the figures that you provided had a death rate from Omicron for people above 70 that was 40% higher than the death rate for Alpha. Okay, so that was the question I asked, but I will I will try and answer some of my own questions because of of the figures that you provided me, Senator Senator Maybe we could finish Senator. Well, I'll just well, I'll add more to the um, question to give this, you some this context. This process needs to operate. Where, where questions are asked and answers are put, it's essential for me to being able to maintain the call and work through the program. Um, I'm sure we can facilitate a discussion if that's what you wish to have. Okay, so, so um, but the next if question. you would like to put a question and then I'll okay, facilitate an so answer for of, you. Of the data that you used uh, to come up with this uh, figure that was 40 per cent higher, uh, of, of the actual uh, 546,000 people, uh, 158,000 people were actually unknown. 
their vaccination status was unknown. So in other words, you've got a margin of error of around 30% uh, added to the fact that the PCR test doesn't distinguish between live and dead virus and, you know, we basically may as well have finger in the air stuff. Um, how can you claim that this data is accurate when there is such a high margin of error? Senator, that's why I'm referring to this very detailed and very, um, as, as uh, Philip Gould said earlier, um, world-leading study from the National Centre of Immunisation Research and Surveillance, where we have full data from the Australian Immunisation Register linked with aged care, um, aged care resident status and, and age um, through other sources. And so that, that removes exactly the, the issue you're, that you've pointed out. We did have incomplete data previously. Um, so categorically, vaccination does protect, uh, particularly that older age group. Um, it also demonstrates uh, that is also the case within the Omicron period. Can I just, just sort of point out, I, I think we might be talking slightly across purposes here when you talk about rates. When I, when I think about rates, it's a per um, certain number um, rather than a raw number. Uh, so if we take the raw numbers of deaths during the Omicron period, yes, the, the, there was higher, a higher death number during that period because of the large number of cases, particularly in 2022. But in terms of rates, um, that is a, you know, case fatality rate uh, compared with the numbers of, of people that are getting the infection, which is the, the epidemiological well, way of looking well, at Well, just, just to correct you, sorry, sorry I, no, I sorry, am talking Senator, about rates. Senator Rennick, I, I am speaking. Senator Rennick, um, it is time to rotate the call. Can Authorised G. Rennick, LNP Chermside.